Hello, this is Steve G0FUW and we've got Dan M0TGN and Lewis G4YTN and we're going to do a small demonstration on harmonics and filters. Um, this has applications for dealing with transmitter interference uh, and also with EMC which you will uh, later in the, uh, in the course. What we've got here is a crystal oscillator, um, a bit rough and ready but works perfectly well. Running on 3.5 megahertz with a, a crystal that's actually 3504 kilohertz. Um, so first of all, we'll switch on the oscillator, and if Dan turns up the radio, we should be able to hear the oscillator running. Now, just to prove that we're hearing the oscillator and not something else, if I touch the thing, you can hear it just going off frequency slightly there. So that's what we're listening to. Um, now it's the crystal oscillator is running. What we're going to do now is look at the second harmonic, which should be twice 3504, which is 7008. Uh, and there it is, 7008. And again, just to prove that the oscillator is what we're hearing, you can hear it there as we touch it. And going up to the third harmonic, which is 10.512. There we go. So all the way up. We could keep going up and up uh, different harmonics and you can hear them quite well. Um, the question is, is that something to be worried about and, and how strong are they? And to illustrate that, we're going to show the same harmonics on a, a thing called a spectrum analyzer. Okay, what you can see on the screen now is an RF test set. Uh, it's a complex bit of kit, but it's currently running as a spectrum analyzer, which means that on the screen we can see a range of frequencies. Um, in this case, it's running from about 3 up to about 12 megahertz. And the three spikes that you can see on the screen are the signals that we could hear on the receiver. First of all, there's the fundamental at 3.5 megahertz. And then in the centre of the screen, at about 7 MHz, is the second harmonic. And towards the right is the third harmonic. And what we're going to do now is we're going to fit a low-pass filter into the circuit, which will hopefully get rid of the harmonics. OK, well, what we're going to do now is fit the low-pass filter. So if I unplug that from there. Dan, if you can plug the filter in, and then I'll connect the oscillator into the other end of the filter, and then we can see the difference. The second harmonic is much reduced, it's still there, but it's much less than it was, and the third harmonic appears to have disappeared altogether, so that's, uh, that's pretty good attenuation. Um, not much else to say about that really, other than that just shows how effective the low-pass filter is. OK, what we're going to do next is replace the crystal oscillator with a crystal calibrator, which is a little bit of test equipment that produces far more harmonics than the uh, crystal oscillator we were using before. So if I switch him on, um, it's running through the same low-pass filter, but here you've got a signal every 1 MHz, and you can see there how it nicely tails off. But if we increase the number of uh, signals, that's every half a MHz, and that's every 100 kilohertz. And what you've got now is something that looks a little bit more like the diagram on page 57 of the advanced textbook, that's figure 8.5, uh, which shows you the sort of classic low pass filter curve, um, albeit this has got a slightly different cutoff frequency. Um, if I move the screen along, we can actually see where the cutoff is for this filter. It's about there and that's reading 5 MHz in the centre of the screen. So the 3.5 oscillator we had will pass through quite well. The 7 MHz, not quite so well, and the 10.5 uh, MHz, the third harmonic, is well cut off. So uh, that's really how a low-pass filter works. What I can do is we can switch it to a 7 MHz low-pass filter, just to see that the cut-off frequency does change. So Dan, if you could move that plug across there. Okay, so now you can see that the, all of that is moving through, so we need to adjust the screen and you can see the, the same sort of shape and then the cutoffs about 9 megahertz. 
So 7 megahertz would pass through quite well, 14 not so good and 21 would definitely be, uh, be lost into the, uh, into the noise. So that's your low pass filters. Hope that's been useful. 73s from G0FUW, M0TGN and G4YTN. Thank you. Okay, in case you think the low pass filter is a, a very complicated beast, um, I thought it would be worth showing you the uh, insides of the, uh, of the filter. This one was built many years ago actually by a good friend of mine, uh, G3LGX, uh, Alex, sadly no longer with us, but uh, his kit lives on. And um, as you can see, it's made inside this uh, small tin. If we take the lid off, You can see inside there, all there is is a bunch of coils and capacitors. The values are kind of important, but um, you can see the construction style is fairly basic. But as you saw on the screen, it's a very effective filter and works very, very well.